Governor Saludo commissions first technology incubation center in the southeast. Governor's wife, Mrs. Saludo, visits various health centers in Oka. Federal government calls on federal universities to halt increase in tuition. And 45-year-old former child care worker charged with child abuse. Good morning and welcome to the news. In details, Governor Chuko Masoludo has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra state economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's give him maximum support for the task ahead. My name is Nonya Mokoye. Welcome to the news. Governor Chuko Masoludo has commissioned in Oka the Solution Innovation District that will drive the digital tribe embedded in his manifesto the first in the southeast. The center houses different segments and offices which are co-working space, digital skills training lab, robotics lab, execu executive co-working space, training hall, among others. Our correspondent Valentine Mbadoga fired this report. The governor inspected the facility and addressed the gathering shortly after, saying that the essence of the innovation district is to prepare the millions of Anambra youths to take control of today. He asked the youth to look up to the opportunities in every disruptive change, saying that only those who plan, work towards it, can control the future, while emphasizing that the greatest resource of Anambra is human capital. The governor reaffirmed the readiness of his administration to mine, harness, and put them to maximum use. He recalled that part of his manifesto is to create a digital tribe, adding that the innovation district will be mainstreamed down to other urban cities and grassroots. The governor maintained that society demands government at all levels to double their efforts in providing quality governance and assured greater commitment to giving the youth of Anambra a bright future. Human capital is the only form of capital that continues to improve when you use it. All I ask you is at this moment in time, major thing now is to ask yourself, hmm, it looks dark here, where is the light? Because anywhere you'll find some spots of darkness, look closely, there are sparks of light somewhere. Don't cry over yesterday, yesterday is gone. And don't cry to bring back the old order, it's gone. We'll now focus on what? Tomorrow. And that tomorrow will drive it through innovation. The Anambra State Commissioner for Industry, Mr. Christian Udechuhu, in his remarks said that the partnership with Solution Innovation District is to enthrone the digital tribe with innovations and creativity. Uh, Mr. Governor has given us a mandate to bring dead industries back to life, to make quick industries stronger, to make quick industries stronger, to make quick industries even stronger than they are by enabling them uh, to not just operate locally within Anambra. Earlier, the special yes. advisor to the governor on innovation and business incubation, Ms. Ching Weokuli, said that the Solution Innovation District takeoff will create jobs and engage youths meaningfully. She yes. said that business ideas will be incubated, the existing ones will be provided with technical support to grow better, while many will be trained in digital skills to meet the demands of the 21st century technological innovations. We provide internet supplies, high speed internet, we provide uh, power. We provide a clean and conducive environment, as you all can see. Young people are able to come in here and focus on building their businesses. This is what this place is about. Up there, we have uh, the digital skills training lab, which where we groom skills, the skills of the future, skills on deep technology, artificial intelligence, software engineering, uh, graphic designing, all kinds of digital skills out of Anambra State. And this is just the takeoff hub. This is just the takeoff hub because uh, the plan Mr. Governor has is to democratize innovation so that every young person in Anambra, every Onya Anambra that has a talent or that, that feels that they can contribute something or they have something to explore will have that platform. The event climaxed with the presentation of laptops by the governor to the successful participants of Level Up Anambra cohort 1 and 2, top functionaries, transition committee chairman. Youths from across the state attended the event.
Wife of the governor of Anambra State, Mrs. Nonya Saludo, visited the rehabilitation center, Chukwe Meka Odumego Juku University Teaching Hospital, Oka, and Community Children's Home, also in Oka, in commemoration of his 53rd birthday. The visit, which have become regular for the governor's wife, was also used to check upon the welfare of persons taking treatment in the state-owned rehabilitation home as well as children living in the orphanages. At Chukwemeka Odumego Juku University Teaching Hospital, Amako Oka, the governor's wife cleared hospital bills for 10 women who just put to bed, including one who gave birth through caesarean section. Speaking at each of the venues, Mrs. Saludo explained that it has always been her routine to make such visits, especially during her birthdays and noted that she finds better satisfaction and completion in reaching out to those in need. She stated that her life is a pe perfect picture of grace and that she would remain thankful to God for blessing her with good health and longevity, while commending caregivers at the hospital and homes for their sacrifices. Mrs. Saluda appealed to them to ensure that they take dietary requirements of the children and those in the rehabilitation centers very seriously, and also to also maintain clean environment at all times to avoid diseases. The governor's wife was accompanied by a wife of the deputy governor of Anambra State, Mrs. Oluchi Ibezim, the transition committee chairman of Idemeli South, Mrs. Amaka Obi, the woman leader of the All Progressives Grand Alliance, Abga in Anambra State, Mrs. Esther Onyekasi, among others. This month's sanitation exercise recorded success in Idemele North local government area. ABS correspondent Ngozo Bileri, who monitored the exercise, reports that the exercise also witnessed creation of zebra crossing in front of the local government area headquarter. Ogidi, here is her report. <laughs> The exercise took place in all urban parts of Idemili North Council area, including Ogidi, Mpo, Obosi, among others. The Idemili North Transition Committee Chairman Chief Chooks Brown, Ibuanoa, was seen at some point clearing debris along the road. In most parts of the communities visited, individuals were seen in their various houses and shops, desilting the drainages, cutting grasses, and sweeping their environment. At Mpo Junction and Ugumu Asike axis of Ogidi, where traders displayed their wares, Chief Ibuanoa sensitized them on the need to keep clean environments in line with Governor Chukuma Soludo's green, green and livable vision for Anambra State. Speaking to the ABS, Chief Ibuanoa said that this month's exercise recorded success, unlike other months when the participation was very low. Noting that he sensitized the people through radio announcements and town criers. Chief Ibuanoa warned that the next month's exercise will be stiffer because they will set up mobile courts that will try offenders or violators of the monthly exercise for possible prosecution. He thanked Governor Soludo for making cleanliness top of his agenda, assuring him that Indy Namely North will follow his footsteps to the letter towards a livable and prosperous state. The cleanliness of the environment. Our His Excellency doesn't joke with it. It is one of his cardinal uh, uh, projects, clean, green, livable society. And we will not joke with it. We will follow it to a logical conclusion. The demilly not must be clean. We are nearing, nearing to that. I would like to tell uh, the indigenous of the Dembele, you should ensure that your compound is clean. Among those who accompanied the chairman of the inspection tour, we are head of information units of the council area, Comrade Uchemwara sanitation and environmental personnel of the council area, among others. From the Idem Mili North headquarters, Ogidi, I am Ngozi Obileri for ABS News. Globex Spring International Academy is Suanocha, Oka North local government area, Anambra State, has held its 2023 Interhouse Sports graduation and prize giving ceremony. The event was specially packaged to thank God for keeping their students safe throughout their period of study in the school. A correspondent, Blessing Dennis, completes the report. 
The event kick-started with an opening prayer by Venerable Onye Kabusin. Sports activities such as table tennis, volleyball, ball, track and field, and others graced the event. Others' events were much passed by the various houses, a special song in French, newscasting in different languages, ballet dance, debate competition, and many others. The director of Global Spring International Academy, Dr. Eza Nata, appreciated guests for honoring their invitation promising that their school will continue to leverage on positive innovation in producing South students in the society. Addressing the gathering, the chairman on the occasion, Chief Emeka Okorie, appreciated the teachers for their outstanding performance in organizing the students and advised parents to take their children's well being very serious. <laughs> And I'm uh, my young parents in the back. One of them is the new one. That's the new one. The new one. The new one. The new one. The director of Global Spring International Academy, Dr. Wata Ezanata, and the Archdeacon of Mbako Archdeaconry, and the vicar, St. Stephen's Anglican Church, Mbako, Venerable Jackson Onye Kabusi, graced the occasion. Also present, we are the principal of the school, Mrs. Agnes Okole, Reverend Clement Ozubu of Anglican Church of Redemption, Oka, a large number of parents, guardians, teachers, friends, and well wishers of the school. The ceremony ended with advice on the need for all students, especially the graduates, to take the next phase of their life with courage and dedication and to embrace creativity as necessary tool for national development and progress. 2023 inter-house graduation and prize-giving ceremony also featured presentation of certificates to the graduates, academic performance prize-giving, cultural dance, among other side attractions. From Iswa Anocha in Oka North local government area, Blessing Dennis, ABS News. The need for Christians to set their lives apart for godly use by being separated from sin, consecrated to God, and living in conformity to the moral precepts of the Bible has been stressed. The Anglican Bishop of Agatha Diocese, Right Reverend Samuel Ezra, for in a sermon at St. Faith Anglican Church, Nanka, during a service of confirmation, admission into Girls' Guild, Women's Guild, and Men's Fellowship for all the parishes under Nanka Archdeaconry, said Christians owe it to God to serve him in truth and spirit, as anyone who defies God's temple, which is human body, will attract God's destruction. We have details of that report. He said that all mortals will someday give account of all that God has blessed them with, especially lives, and as such, it is important that Christians use their lives, resources, and talents to work for God as faithful stewards. Bishop Ezofo regretted that some Christians are guilty of double standards. Despite belonging to different groups in the church, they still practice idolatry. The bishop who outlined principles of stewardship to include divine ownership, human responsibility, accountability, and divine reward, reminded parents to treat their children in the ways of the Lord and never relent in directing them to toe the right path because they will be held accountable for the choices made by their children. It's a time for young believers in Christ to receive the Holy Spirit who enables us to live the Christian life and makes it easy and simple for us. Well, all these groups were created in the church to help us nurture the faith of Christians. That they will live up to the pledges they met, the promises they met before God. And that's why we encouraged the men to help their wives and then the women to help their husbands when they get married. So that it will not just be making promises and pledges in church and then forgetting it as they go. 
In his remarks, the supervising priest of Nanka Archdeaconry, Reverend Canon Ifani Mwemena, who appreciated the bishop for his visit, admonished the newly confirmed and people admitted into various groups to live lives worthy of emulation. Their life will grow, they grow spiritually and um, they show, show the light to others being admitted into God's guild, women guild and fathers of mercy. So we expect that they should live the exemplary life to others to emulate. On his part, the vicar in charge of St. Faith Anglican Church, Nanka, Reverend Arinze Chufu Odinye, commended the bishop and tax Christians to remain steadfast in their faith. I feel elated. It's really a privilege for the bishop to put such an event here. In fact, this is the first time is happening in, in the church. Yes, we believe that uh, the, the, the Holy Spirit that was prayed upon them today will carry them and will motivate them and energize them, empower them to live better Christian lives to the, to the glory of God. The service attended by the President Agwata Daisan Women's Ministry, Mrs. Chinere Ezofo, had 33 candidates who received the Sacrament of Confirmation, 23 girls admitted into the Girls' Guild, 25 women into the Women's Guild, and 37 men admitted into the Christian Men's Fellowship, presentation of certificates to the newly admitted members, and administration of Holy Communion to the newly confirmed candidates formed the high point of the service. Away now from State Stories, uh, President Bola Tinubu on Monday directed the authorities in all federal institutions of higher learning to avoid arbitrary increase in sundry fees payable and where possible defer further increase so that parents and students don't face too much difficulty. While the National Association of Nigerian Students welcomed the directive, the Academic Staff Union of Universities, however, expressed reservations. The president, in a statement by his special advisor on special duties, communications and strategy, Dele Alake, also approved the provision of buses to the students' bodies of all universities, polytechnics and colleges of education across the country. The directive comes barely five days after the presidency insisted that federal universities remain tuition-free. Despite the hike in miscellaneous fees in several universities nationwide, reacting, the Vice President Nance Akintaye Afiz said, We are happy with the development. We have now been given the opportunity to shut down any school that increases school fees again or that refuses to go back to the status quo. But Chairman Asu Yude University of Lagos, Professor Kayode Adebayo, said stopping off fee hike by the president was not the solution to the university's problem. He maintained that universities across the country were not funded by federal government, adding that Tinubu was supposed to announce the financial subventions that would be given to universities. On the foreign scene, a former child care worker has been charged with 1,623 child abuse offences allegedly carried out against 91 children in Australia and elsewhere over 15 years, the Australian Federal Police AFP said in a statement. The 45-year-old man from the Gold Coast has been in police custody since August 2022 when he was initially charged with making child exploitation material and using a carriage service to distribute it. Police said a special investigation uncovered more child abuse material on electronic devices allegedly owned by the man who worked in a dozen child care centers in Brisbane, Sydney, and an unspecified location overseas between 2007 and 2022. Other charges include hundreds of counts of indecent treatment of a child under 16 years, counts of making child exploitation material, and other charges related to possessing, producing, distributing, or obtaining child exploitation material. <coughs> Now, in Argentina, prodigy Lionel Messi has surpassed Al Nasser striker Cristiano Ronaldo as the footballer with the most Guinness World Records. 
the record body shared the updated chart of the most Guinness World Records titles achieved by footballers via their official Twitter handles. In the new update, Messi now has 41 records, one ahead of second place Ronaldo with 40 records. Robert Lewandowski has nine, Kylian Mpape has five, and Neymar has four complete the top five. Congratulations to them, and that's just about it. But remember that you can follow news and programs on ABS from any part of the world by liking our Facebook page. Follow us at Anambra Broadcasting Service. Subscribe to our YouTube at ABS Television Oka. On Twitter, we are on ABS Radio TV. And on Instagram, at ABS Radio TV. You can also log on to our website at www.absradiotv.com. On the main news again, Governor Saludo has commissioned the first technology incubation center in the southeast. Governor's wife, Mrs. Saludo, has visited various health centers in Oka. Federal government has called on federal universities to halt increase in tuition. And on the foreign scene, 45 year old former child care worker has been charged with child abuse. And to end the news, Governor Chukuma Saludo has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra state economy and promotion of core Ibo values. Let's give him maximum support for the task ahead. And that's the news. We thank you so much for watching. My name is Nonya Okoye. Good morning and have a great day.